Hi, I'm Josh Phelps with Tube Depot, and today we're going to be covering assembling the Bud vacuum tube amplifier. Okay, this is what you're going to receive if you purchase the complete kit. You're going to receive your speaker, your power transformer, your output transformer, a bag that has all of your components with detailed labels on what every component is, your printed circuit board, and your chassis, which already has the holes completed for you. Okay, so you wanna start going through your parts inventory and maybe organizing things, capacitors with capacitors, hardware with hardware, and resistors with resistors. Yeah, we're gonna start by doing a little bit of pre-assembly of our chassis, and you're gonna get four grommets. You'll notice you have two larger ones. These are for your power transformer. And if you're facing the controls of the front of your amplifier, those are gonna go on your right, and then you have these two smaller ones that are for the leads on your output transformer. And these are only in place to prevent nicking of wires as they pass through on potentially sharp edges from the holes. So you'll want to install these. Take something like a screwdriver or one of these orange wood sticks, and once they're in, make sure that you work that around, and then you have a nice fit. Next, we're going to install our strain relief. Strain relief goes on the rear panel on the far left side if you're facing the opening of the chassis. Here's a trick you can do if you don't want to mar up the edge of a, any kind of panel on an amplifier. Just put a couple pieces of tape over it. So you'll put one, you'll put one side here. Start to turn and tighten it. Then when you have it most of the way, You'll want to take another wrench or a set of pliers or a crescent wrench and you want this very, very tight. It is essential that this does not come loose. And once you have that tight, that's all you need to do. Do not worry about this, this loose part. This is what's going to tie down our AC cord and we'll deal with that shortly. Next we're going to move on to our fuse holder. Your rubber washer will go on first, then you'll insert that through the panel. You want to hand tighten that and make sure the orientation of this tab is facing upward so you can easily get to it and solder when it's time for us to install our AC cord. Take a fingernail or a flathead screwdriver and slightly elevate this tab. And that's it with the chassis right now. Let's move on to PCB assembly. orientation on your PCB, you'll notice there's a 9 here and there's a 9 here. That refers to pin 9 on your socket. With your kit comes nice Michael X Belton sockets. And if you'll notice, it's marked pin 9 here. So you insert that into the bottom of your PCB. And if you'll notice on your sockets, there's a stopping point. And you want to make sure that all of these pins are seated nice, nicely in your PCB. Make sure those are firmly in place, give a visual inspection. When soldering, you want to make sure that you have a nice quality soldering iron that has a clean tin tip. Yeah, and if you see, this iron is just about perfect. You want to make sure it's clean before you do any connection. When you're soldering, the concept here is to apply solder to a properly heated surface. And the surface temperature depends on the actual component, whether you're wiring a hand-wired amplifier and you have a thick turret or eyelet or a PCB where you need less heat. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of solder, touch it to the iron, touch to our pin, then I'm going to take it down and touch the pad, and I'm feeding solder right onto the pad. So once you have that pin soldered into place, put some downward pressure on your board, and you're going to reheat this just for a second, and this is just to ensure that we have a nice seated socket. Heat that, you'll visually see it liquefy while you're putting some slight downward pressure on the board. Hold that for a second and then let off. Now we should be free to go around and solder all these other pins and that one pin should basically hold this socket into place. You'll insert your next socket and we're gonna repeat the exact same procedure that we did on the other. 
So we recommend flipping this board over at this point and soldering from this top side here. And then you can go around freely and solder all of your other connections and use a generous amount of solder. You'll notice I'm pausing in between these and it's just giving my solder connection a second to set up. If you notice these solder connections have a nice, solid, shiny connection, and that's when you know you have a properly heated solder connection. Our whole pad is covered in solder. Our pin has a seamless connection, and that's what you want. You can go back over these connections on the top side as well, and make sure they're not starved for a connection. Everything else looks pretty good. Next, we're gonna insert our input jack. It's the same concept here on this jack. It'll take longer to heat up this metal tab than it will the actual pad. If you flip your board over and you notice on the top side of these pads that you do not see solder that's made it all the way through, you need to either reheat the connection or if you're really careful and have a fine tip soldering iron, you can go from the top. But it's essential for every solder connection on this amplifier to have a good connection on the top and bottom because there's traces that run to certain locations on the bottom and on the top. So don't just assume that you have a nice connection on the back and that it's fine. It needs to have a solid connection on both sides. Next, we're gonna install our potentiometers. You'll start with removing the screws and washer. Just any kind of pair of pliers, grab this. These pads are slightly undersized, so you have a nice connection. So P2 is gonna be your one meg potentiometer audio taper. You'll press that into place and you might have to wiggle it just a little bit and then it should slide right in. And we did that because we wanted the strongest connection possible with no solder on there. The same thing as before. That first solder connection is going to be the most crucial to make sure you get that nice 90 degree angle that, that we're after. And the other should fall into place. P1 is going to be your 250K audio taper pot. Same procedure. Looks like a nice solid connection. Next, you want to take out three of your standoffs and three of your 632 screws. Your holes here, here, and here are where these are going to go. And just finger tighten these for right now. We're just test fitting our PCB into our chassis before we do our final assembly of the PCB. You'll want to remove the locking nut from your input jack first. This has a snug fit, but it should go in just fine. Visually inspect and make sure that you can see the threaded parts of your standoffs here, here, and here. And that's all we're doing. We're just test fitting. Because if there's a problem, you want to know about it before you've assembled the entire board. So now we're going to remove this and do the final assembly of the PCB. You want to clip these off. So you'll notice you have two 22s and you have one 47. The 47 is going to go into C12. These are what's known as a polarized capacitor and it is very, very important that you install these in the correct way because your amplifier won't work, it'll hum, and also these can explode. So you'll notice there's a plus sign here and on these capacitors it's not marked but this gray strip is your negative side. So this is your positive side. You'll find these one UF caps, and these are what's called bipolar. It makes its own polarity. So we're gonna take our large 47, that's gonna to go to C12. You wanna make sure that you have a little bit of daylight so we can do a visual inspection and bend this out a little, a little bit. And that's just gonna give us a nice solid, as close to a good mechanical connection as we can get. So once you have that in place, you're ready to solder. 
If you don't have great connections on the top side, don't freak out about that yet. In order to speed this up for yourself, you can go through and do all of uh, your components. Just make sure the spacing is correct for what you put in, because we're gonna do a strong visual inspection at the end before this ever goes into the amplifier to make sure, because what you really don't want to happen is this is soldered into your chassis with all of your leads from your transformers, and then realizing you have a bad connection on the bottom. So you really just wanna check your work several times. So now we're gonna do the same with C9 and C3. So let's take R6 and R4 here. You're gonna to wanna to take your 100K resistors here and just like make almost a 90 degree angle, like where you're just bending it like that, right along with the lead and the component. That should drop right into place. One trick, if you're real picky about it, you can just take a piece of notebook paper and fold it over. So if you have four folds and it will fit under that component, bend your lead slightly on the back to kind of finalize it and give you somewhat of a mechanical connection there. Same thing here. Just flip this over and solder these into place. If you notice this solder connection here, it kind of has a blob on this side. That means it got through, but it doesn't have a good solid connection on this lead and this pad. So it's gonna be a good idea when this whole board is done to if you see anything like this, go reheat these. Cause you just want a nice solid connection on both sides. The other resistors to point out that will need to be elevated from the board are gonna be R17, R16, R5. These two resistors that we already covered and R18. Now that we've finished putting all of our components on the board, you notice these all have a nice air gap under them. Some of them it's not necessary, like again, over in this area. But once you've done this, the only thing we have left to do is we have to put all our wires in for our transformer, our power switch, and our indicator light. But before you do this, you wanna go over all of these connections and make sure that you have uh, nice coverage on the pads and the lead it looks like it makes a nice smooth transition from the lead into the pad. And that lets you know that the solder's on there. So visually inspect, this pin does not look great on this tube socket here, so we're gonna to touch that up and just look very closely and see anywhere that you think you might need some attention because you would much rather do it now than when it's in the amplifier and you're having a problem. And everything looks good. So take your ruler and with your 22 gauge wire that's included with your kit, cut two pieces about four inches long and use the second one as a guide. And you're gonna to wanna to do that same thing with a piece of your yellow 22 gauge wire that's included. Strip your wire back about a quarter of an inch before you pull the jacket off. You wanna make sure that you spiral these strands back nice and tightly because the holes are very exact on the PCB. Your two black pieces of wire are gonna go in your switch holes here it does not matter which, they're both the same. But they do have to go through the back side. And you never want to have the jacket of any wire 
in your solder connection. You want a nice gap in between, not a large gap, but just some, some space. Flip these over and make sure you have a nice con connection on both sides. Clip any excess leads. Your yellow wire is going to go through W1, through the bottom side. Once these are in place, Gently fold that wire, and you want to do the same with your two switch wires. But your switch wires are going to go in this direction. So here, and this is what your completed PCB should look like up to this point. All right, next you're going to want to take your transformers and these rubber bands, go ahead and remove these. You're going to want to find your, your four 832 screws and you're going to find the, uh, the corresponding keep nuts. And it's important to not stress these. So when you're straightening these out, this is the crucial part to be careful of where it's actually going into the bell housing. Take your wires, kind of straighten these out. Do the same on your power transformer. And if you do decide to chuck these in a drill, if you want to do nice twisted filament wires on the inside of the chassis, always support here at the base. Never trust that you're just not going to over tighten here. Hold it at the base somehow and then maybe do a couple of uh, final twists by hand. Do not stress this or it'll break the transformer. All right, you want to take your power transformer. This is the primary side of your transformer with the uh, black and black white wire and the brown white and brown wire. Those are going to go through this grommet. Again, again, the most crucial thing here is don't rush this and don't pull at this end. These are all your secondary wires on this side. Place those through your other grommet. When you get towards the end here, don't just start yanking these through on this side because there again, you're stressing those wires. Before you put your screws in, Make sure there's nothing that you want to change inside here as far as the wire wires go because you want these two green wires to be by each other. You want these two red wires to be by each other. If that's what you have, you're ready to go ahead and put in your, your screws and your keep nuts. These keep nuts should start to cut into the uh, chassis which is what you want, because you want a nice, solid, tight screw connection there. Take these wires and put them inside here to protect them in the meantime, because these sharp edges here can, can nick these wires. So for your output transformer, your yellow, black, and green wire will go towards the back panel that has your, your AC cord and your fuse holder. Your red, blue, and brown wires will face the front. And again, be very careful not to strain these wires. So now, you're gonna take two of your 632 screws and your two soldering tabs, and in a pair of pliers, you're gonna wanna grab the tab about there, and you wanna make sure you leave enough room for one of these 632 keep nuts to fit in there. You'll notice there's two holes by your AC cord here. You just hand tighten those for now. Position these two tabs upward and you really, really want to tighten these down. These are the most important things in the amplifier. This is your star ground and this is your earth ground for your AC cord. It is absolutely vital that these never come loose under any circumstances whatsoever. It's very dangerous. You can go ahead and install your 1 4th inch Switchcraft mono jack on the back panel. Install it with these two tabs facing upward so you can get to them when it's time to solder. 
everything on this amplifier you want very tight. Now you'll take your AC cord and you're going to need a little bit more lead. And the connections here are black, white, and green, which is standard for US. This is your black, which is the right side of your outlet when you're looking at it, which is the hot. This is the left, which is the white wire. This is your neutral. And the green is the center connector. And this is ground. This is earth ground. Take these leads to the front of your amplifier. And that's where you're going to want to take some kind of an X-Acto knife. We're just trying to score it. You really want to visually inspect and make sure that you didn't go all the way through. And we're also going to check that again very carefully when we get this jacket taken off. On this green earth ground cord here, it's probably going to be one of the two shortest of these wires. So if you cut into it a little, it's okay, because the majority of that's going to get trimmed off. You're going to do a nice cut along the back and then grab this and pull it. Now you can take these other three wires and just work this down. If you did your score right, just stop right there. Slide these through your strain relief. When you see on the inside there, where you're starting to see the sleeving of the AC cord come through, you want a nice little bit sticking out, but not, not too much. Start to hand tighten your strain relief down, but you definitely want to go behind it and really tighten it down with a set of pl uh, pliers or a crescent wrench. Yeah, it's absolutely vital that this never comes out of the amplifier. So now you should be able to expose your wires. Now you'll take your PCB, make sure everything's snapped into place properly. You don't have any wires pinched. Your jack's sticking out of the front, both your potentiometers are sticking out of the front. The shafts are all the way in and they're dead flat against this wall. You can take your remaining three 632 screws Take your spacing washer, threaded spacing washer, and put it back on the shaft here, like this, with this lock washer. So hold it into place here, and then press it through. And then your other side, go ahead and tighten this down. So we're going to use our crescent wrench that has tape on it. And our two black switch wires are what we're looking to put in place here. You can leave a little bit of excess wire here, but as long as whatever kind of wire strippers you're using, you have room to get them inside of the chassis. Yeah, and again, you want to do probably a quarter inch on each side. So take your first wire and place it through. Use the other side as a balance to, to hold that wire in place for you. And remember, this tab is going to take longer to heat up than your wire. So if you don't want your wire melted back, you'll want to heat this for a moment first and then transfer the iron down to the wire while it's making contact with both of these points. And then you'll feed solder on. You want to clip that as short as you can get it because you want nice separation here between these two tabs. Take your other wire. You might need to clip a little bit off depending on how long you left it. Place that wire in and then make sure you have a gap there so your jacket is not down inside of your solder connection. And then finally tighten this down and it needs to be very, very tight. These switches ship in the on position. So go ahead and switch this to off. If it's pointed towards these tabs, it's on. So point it to off. You can do a pre-trim on these wires at this point to get them out of the way. As long as they're touching this front wall here, you can go ahead and cut all of this off. So now we're going to do the most important ground that we talked about in the amplifier, which is this earth ground. You want to leave a little bit of excess wire for any reason if this cord ever came out, maybe this wouldn't get pulled 
all the way out of the amplifier. This is just very important. It's not that you could get electrocuted. If this is, is uh, not connected, you will get electrocuted. Strip back about a half inch here. Nice solid twist. Very thoroughly tin this. You're gonna to wanna to take your wires and try and bend this like an L, an even L. We want a very solid mechanical connection too. We wanna to avoid it. any possible reason for this connection to ever come loose from this amplifier. So when you have that in place, squeeze that down so this is never gonna move off here. Since you have the density of this chassis, it's much harder to heat this up. So you might want to raise the temperature on your soldering iron. You're going to want to hold your iron on this tab first. The further you get towards the chassis, the harder it gets to heat it up because this is acting as a heat sink. Let's take about four inches of your 22 gauge black wire, four inches. Strip about a half inch from each side, and then you're going to want to tin this, like we've done with all of our other wires. This is going to go into W6. That's a very important ground, so make sure it has a good solid solder connection. Once that's dried, take your other side of the wire, fold it over like we did on our green wire ground. Slide this through your soldering tab. You want to make sure this wire has a good connection with nothing on it. So heat your soldering tab. You want to fold this wire downward now and kind of just out of the way here. This white wire from your wall AC cord is going to come over and go to W4. Now it's time to wire up the fuse. You can cut this one to where there's not a lot of excess length to it. But it's important to solder this to the tip of this fuse holder because when the user opens this amplifier, if you saw that this was plugged into the wall and your fuse was in place here and it was soldered to this outside sleeve, your fuse is now connected to that and so is your finger if your, if your hand came over here. When you put it to the end here, there's no way as soon as you can even open this to expose the metal, it's already disconnected. So make sure from your wall goes right here. Place this through the loop on the back or through the hole opening on the back of your fuse holder. Squeeze this down really tight. And if you have any excess that's going over, into the PVC jacket. Just clip that away. At this point, you can take your indicator light. You need to confirm, if you live in the United States and you have 120 volt wall voltage, you need to confirm that you do have 120 volt uh, indicator light. If you have 240, make sure you get a 240. There's a little rubber washer that's in here and it adds tension so it's kind of putting pressure on the back side and it's in case that you don't have this nut on here tight enough so make sure that's in place before you thread it through and that goes on the front side not the back side once that's in place put your nut over these wires and you want to make sure that you're not pressing you're kind of pressing against the housing here the metal housing not the actual tip here because that can crack Okay, nice snug connection there. All right, now take these two leads. It does not matter which one. And you see your two light holes here. Just enough for like a nice little curly cue and kind of estimate you don't want it to stick out of the top of the chassis. You do want these pretty much dead even. Leave the jackets on and twist these. and then we'll solder it. Once these are in place, 
kind of press them down out of the way. This is kind of just their lane here. You definitely don't want to leave any excess leads and have them go any further past this or really around your tube sockets or any of that. Maybe something along the lines of that. And then this whole upper area is, is now done. So getting back to the other side, locate your two green wires. Make sure they're kind of beside each other. If you do check these wires, it's not 100% vital that you do, but in theory it can phase cancel and reduce uh, 60 cycle hum in this filament line. So you want to, if you do do this, support the wires down. Because you remember, we don't want to stress those coming out of the bell end of our transformer. When you feel that wire starting to twist in your fingers where you're supporting at the bottom, it's time to stop. So now you want to take this set of green wires and go around this board and kind of lay it flat on the chassis here. And you're going to want these two connectors without a lot of excess room or a length left on your wire. And they're going to go in these two holes that are marked filament. This should go in the holes and have a nice amount of tension because of the turns on the wire. You want this to come out of your grommet, out of your transformer and 90 degree angles along with the chassis. So you can take an orange wood stick or whatever you have. I'm putting a little pressure on it to pull it out this way. I just kind of want it to lay flat. Next are going to be our two red wires. These don't need to be twisted. Space these to where they're going up to these two tabs that are uh, centered to the left and right of the B plus marking. Yeah, it starts to get a little crowded in here and you might have to get a little creative, but don't always just be aware that they, this is very hot and it's gonna burn any of your wires. And if you want a nice clean assembly when it's done, make sure any of these wires are out of the way. Okay, now you're gonna take your two striped wires, your green and yellow and your red and yellow. And these are gonna go to W5 and W7 and it really does not matter which one, just as long as both of them are connected and they have a good solid solder connection. So I'm gonna do red and yellow to W7. One little trick I do sometimes when these wires don't want to stay where I want them to stay while you put them in their, their holes is uh, take one of these heat sink tools and just kind of clip that to one of these surrounding wires. Because again, you don't want this wire moving and quivering at all like down inside of that because uh, you can get one of those cold solder connections. So that wire is now held in place. I'm going to solder it. And now we're going to do the same with our green and yellow striped wire. We're gonna jump over here to our black wire from our output transformer. That connects to the uh, sleeve of our jack. And this is, a, this is a ground reference for the output transformer. And that's grounded through the sleeve right to the chassis. So it wants to go right here. And this is gonna be your tip connection. And we'll cover that in a second. So next you wanna take your green wire and that's gonna to go to your tip connection. Get your wire short, but not too short where you don't have any more lead if you ever needed to cut back some more wire or it's just a good rule of thumb, short as possible, but without dooming the wires, so to speak. You'll also take this yellow wire connection that we made earlier from W1 on your circuit board and you're also gonna strip that back. Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't mention, but you'll notice on all these transformer wires, these are already pre-tinned, so you do not need to tin those. This green wire goes through here, and your yellow wire goes through there. You're going to take this yellow wire, and what this is, this is an additional, our kits ship with an 8 ohm speaker, so this is an 8 ohm tap for the secondary of this output transformer. This is an additional 4 ohm tap that's not used, but if you had a 4 ohm speaker that you wanted to use, this is what you would use and you would shrink off the green. So go ahead and take this wire and imagine this is where it would be going if you were using it. So maybe about that length, clip your excess off, take a piece of heat shrink tubing. Just 
hold there for a second and let it... You can just tuck this up under the chassis. Or if you have a, um, if you have a zip tie, this would be a good spot to use that. Okay, this is the red common wire for the primary side of your output transformer. And this is gonna go to W9 right next to your two diodes here. This wire should just be about the correct length, so you shouldn't have to trim any off. It's very important that you don't go through here across these resistors that get very hot where this wire could lay against it. You wanna go around this filter capacitor here. Now, your wire nine hole, that is gonna get your blue wire Maybe take a little off. For your brown wire, clip off the excess of exposed pre tin wire. Take another piece of heat shrink. Yeah, so take one of your zip ties and put it around these wires. All right, now that's everything, except for our primary wires. So on your fuse holder, take the remaining piece of your 22 gauge black PVC wire. And on your fuse, right through there like that. This is going to W1, so kind of stretch that out. Make sure you have enough room to reach that with not a lot of excess. So it does fit, but I'm going to go ahead and do these other primary wires first. Right to left is probably the way to go so you don't get in your own way. So for the two tabs on W3, you're gonna take your two striped wires, your black and white and your brown and white wires, pull these over in the general region with just a little bit of excess slack on them. Score these where you wanna start having exposed wire. Clip the excess. Now you'll do the same with your two solid color wires. Your two solid color wires, your black and your brown, are both going to fit into the side-by-side -side pads at W2. Now our final wire that comes over the top is from our fuse holder. You want to make sure to take your amplifier and any of these small leads that you clipped off could be bridging connections or somewhere up under the amp. So, I mean, you can hear these rattling around. Make sure you take this over your waste basket and shake it out real good. And there's nothing in there because the chances are not great that it could make a connection, but it could, and that's dangerous. So make sure all that's out. All right, now that you completed your amplifier, it's time to do some testing to make sure that it's safe before we check voltages or anything else. I've got a dim bulb tester here, and this case is actually wired to ground. If you don't have a dim bulb tester, you can probably get away with this using a power strip, but you don't want to even touch this chassis before you've ruled out that there's any kind of voltage on it. This circle here on the bottom of your uh, electrical outlet is connected to earth. So is this case. So I'm gonna plug my AC cord in, my power is already set to on. I have a switch on my dim bulb tester, so I'm gonna turn it on. Okay, so my indicator light's coming on, but I haven't touched this yet. Take your digital multimeter, set your meter to AC volts. Take one lead, it doesn't matter which, anchor it on your chassis, and then I'm gonna take my other lead and I'm gonna to touch it to this box. You see my multimeter goes to zero volts AC, which lets me know there is zero AC voltage. I'm going to switch to DC voltage and I'm going to do the same thing. 
Okay, so this has let me know that it is now safe for me to touch this chassis and there's no harmful voltage on it. Once we've done that, I'm gonna turn off my dim bulb tester and it's time to pop in tubes and see if there's anything else that we should be concerned with before proceeding with measuring voltages. It's a good idea to label your tube sockets. So now I've installed my tubes. I'm going to turn my dim bulb tester back on. We've ruled out there's any kind of AC voltage from some kind of wall grounding issue or anything leaking to the chassis, so you don't need to check for AC voltage again. Now, after we let this run for a minute and the tubes start to conduct, we want to make sure that there's no DC voltage. So now the tubes are installed. Zero volts. So now with tubes in place, it is safe for me to touch this amplifier. If you have a dim bulb tester, you'll notice that we don't have any shorts or my light would be going off. So it is now also safe for me to plug this into a standard wall outlet. Because if you leave this on your dim bulb tester, you will not get accurate voltages because it's limiting the amount of current that the circuit can take. I'll turn the power off there. I'll turn off my dim bulb tester. You'll notice on your tube amp, the exhaust tip of your EL84 tube sticks out higher than the transformers. So you want to put some kind of block under it so you can measure voltages but not damage your tube or its socket. Then before powering the amplifier again, you want to make sure this is nice and sturdy and it's not going to slip off. Now that we've ruled out there's no dangerous voltage on your chassis and it's safe for you to touch and you've turned your amplifier over and anchored it on something stable, you can plug in your standard AC cord to a 120 volt wall outlet. Once you've done that, power your amplifier. Before you measure any of these voltages, you wanna let your amplifier to run for a couple of minutes for the tubes to heat up and start to conduct. While that's warming up, you wanna take your black lead of your digital multimeter and anchor it to your chassis in one of these screw holes here. And a good way to make sure you have a strong connection without even measuring voltages is go ahead and set your multimeter to ohms. 0.2 ohms is right. That's letting me know that we have continuity here. And it's just measuring the resistance between this piece of metal. Okay, so switch it back to DC volts. And you wanna start on your EL84 tube and you wanna to go to pin three. You should have about three volts DC here. Okay, that's exactly what we want. So next you wanna to go to pin nine on your EL84, 161 volts is correct. Pin seven, you should have 178 volts. All these voltages are plus or minus 5%. So now let's move on to our 12AX7. And first we wanna measure pins three and eight. Pin eight, you should have just over one volt DC, 1.2 volts. You should have just under one volt on pin three. There we go. So now you wanna move on to pins one and six. Pins one, should have about 114 volts DC. And on pin six, should have 126 volts DC. If you've gotten these correct voltages, you're now safe to plug up your amplifier and check for functionality. All right, now we wanna make our speaker cable. You'll chuck these in a drill. You'll pull them out and they should be even. If they're not, clip the longer one to match the shorter one. Take these in a set of pliers, firmly hold those in place. Stretch it out. We're doing the speaker side first, so we want these to be even. We strip about a quarter inch of each. Your black lead will go to negative and your white lead will go to positive. You take these wires, hook it through the tab here and here. You can take your pliers and tighten that down slightly. This should be the end that you chucked. Go ahead and clip off about an inch or so, just to make sure that you don't have any wire that was damaged. Take out your 1 4th inch male switchcraft mono plug, should I say, to put the barrel on first. Then you wanna put the plastic protection sleeve on. 
and our black is going to go on this tab and the white is going to go to this uh, top tab and the black will be on the lower tab. But if you notice, our black will be here and the white is here. So we need to clip about maybe two eighths of an inch off. You want to take this connector and bend it downward slightly. You want to kind of layer up this solder without totally liquefying it to, to get a nice bead because we're going to want to bury our black connector down into this spot here. And we want a good solid connection. We want it actually touching inside of its little blob of solder. We want it touching the actual metal here. And a good way to do this is to take one of these heat sinks and put downward pressure here. You can go ahead and place this white wire inside of the upper tab to hold it in place. Allow that to dry for a minute. Cut off the excess sticking through. Be very careful that you do not over tighten these tabs. This is in no way meant to fully clamp down on this because if you tighten this really tight, it cuts right through. So you want to turn your completed cabinet over and you want your speaker tabs to be facing down towards the ground. And it ships with an arrow. This just indicates that this is the top side. Turn that around facing you, locate the center point of the back panel. Put a pencil mark on the edge at the center point. Now do the same with your chassis. This is an eight inch box, so four inches from either side will get you to your center point. And it's always better to double and triple check this before measure three or four times, drill once. So now that you have your center point on your chassis and your back panel, bring your chassis up to the edge and you wanna keep it about a 16th of an inch from the edge, do not do it flush. Make sure it's squared. You can take something like a smaller Phillips head screwdriver and stick it through this hole. There's another hole on the other side of you, remember, and this will allow you to get right where you need this to be. Kind of find that hole, and once you feel that you're in it, kind of find the center point, and then just press to make a nice little indention. And do the same. You can do this by hand, but it's also nice to have a drill press. 
And either way, you want to have uh, some kind of backing wood to this. And what this is going to do is stop blowout. So you turn on your drill press, make sure you have some kind of eye protection on. Yeah, and if you do this right, you should have nice clean holes on both sides. Okay, so lastly, you want to take your aluminum shielding tape, and this should be two feet, and you want to divide this by three. So flip this over on the back side. Now that we've completed our build, let's check for functionality. Yep, it works. Hi, I'm Joe with Tube Depot. Today we're going to play our new kit called The Bud. It's a two watt amp with a single 12AX7 and a single EL84. There's one knob for volume and one knob for tone. Uh, we're using it today with a 10 inch Jensen Mod 1035 and I'm playing a Squire Classic Vibe, just a basic Strat, uh, so we can see what kind of tones we can get out of this. Uh, first thing I'm going to try to do is get a nice clean tone. <laughs> But it also has the ability to get uh, nasty and a nice creamy breakup, so I'll turn it all the way up, max that out. So you can see it has a lot of uh, oomph for such a small little bud. And uh, if you uh, have any more questions, please check it out at tubedepot.com.